In this video, we're going to make a presentation page with an animated timeline. So we'll show and hide some text and images. To add the second page to our lesson, we can come down here to page 1 and right click on it and choose New Page. Or we can go over to the toolbar and click on the New Page icon. Either way, we'll end up with a nice blank page 2. Next, we'll need some text for our timeline. I'm going to add some text objects onto my page. So I'll start by clicking on the text object here, then drawing one onto my page. And I can use my Control v shortcut to paste in text from the project files document. I'll make the text size a lot larger, bold, and center align it. We'll move this out of the way, and I'll insert a new text object, and paste in more text from the document. Once I have one text object, I can create more by right-clicking and choosing Duplicate, and placing that. To create even more text objects, I could again right-click and say Duplicate, or I can use a keyboard shortcut, Control D. We'll duplicate this a few more times. Then I will copy and paste in more text. And finally, I will align my text. So I can use my alignment tools by multi-selecting two objects and using the Align Left option. Or I can just place one object and use the blue lines to help get things lined up. And we'll move this down here and move both of these up and use the Align Top. Next, I want the same images from the previous page. Rather than importing the same images again, I'll just grab them from page 1. So I'll come down here to my flow and select page 1. And now I will highlight one object by selecting it and then holding down Shift while selecting the second one. And I will copy them, so I'll right-click and say Copy, and go back to page 2. Then here, I can paste them using Control-V, and then place them where they need to go. If I need to hide one object, I can come over to the cast and use the eyeball icon to hide a particular object. This allows me to see through images onto the objects below. This won't affect anything at runtime, it's just for my ease of authoring. From here, I can start deciding when I want to show things. The first thing that I want to show is this text back here. So I can right click on it and choose Add to Timeline. So what that has done is switched my Pages tab over to my Timeline tab, and added that particular text object into the timeline. Next, I'll start adding the rest of my objects to the timeline. Next, I want to show this text object, so I'll right-click and say Add to Timeline, and then this image, and this text object. I can also multi-select objects and add them all at once, or, if I have a hard time selecting an object, I can come here to the cast and right-click and say Add to Timeline that way. So, let's take a closer look at our timeline. All these objects are currently shown from the beginning to the end of the timeline, which is about 8 seconds. 8 seconds is a bit short, so what I'll do is grab the end and drag it out to about 12 seconds. I can also use the Zoom tool to zoom out for longer timelines, 
or zoom in for fine-grained detailed positioning. This seems like a comfortable zoom level. Next, I want to start showing and hiding things. This first text object I want to show right at the beginning, and I want it to stick around for a few seconds, maybe about three seconds. So I'll come over here to the right and drag this off of the end down to about three seconds. So this text object will show at the beginning for three seconds. Next, I'll want this text object and this image to show up around that time. So I'll find them here in the timeline and drag their start position to three seconds. Then I'll grab the next text object and I'll have that show up a few seconds later. And then I'll want the next text and the next image to show up a little bit after that. If I need to, I can rearrange these objects in the timeline by clicking and dragging. So I want this text object to show up probably around 8 seconds, and the same for that image. And that just leaves me with this last text object, which I will show around 10 seconds. I can always come back later and adjust this timing. So let's preview this and see how it looks. There's my first text object. Disappears. And then the rest of the page builds up. Notice that everything sticks around at the end, except for that first text object. That's because all these items down here in the timeline are stuck to the end. That's what the little arrow tells us. If I drag one of these off of the end, then it would no longer be visible when the timeline ends. This would hide at 11.9 seconds. I'll move this back to the end, and then I can right click and say fix to end. And that will reattach it. So I can adjust the rest of my timing a little bit here to something that feels a little more natural. And even though this object down here is only set to show for one second, because it's attached to the end of the timeline, it will stick around as long as the learner is on that page. So let's preview this again. The timing is a little better, but these objects show very abruptly. So to fix that, I can select all of my objects, and from here I'll come up to the properties, and change the transition in and transition out properties. So I'll change this to fade for both. Really the only object that's being hidden is the main title text a long time ago, but it's easier just to do all of them together. So let's preview this once again. That looks a lot nicer. And with that, we're done with this page. So let's save our lesson. And in the next video, we'll learn how to create a click-to-learn-more exercise using layers.